Hello everyone, this is Rocco coming at you for another 12.3 full self driving video. We are headed off to a uh, our Carl Sandburg test route, the original test route. Last week we did the alternate test route and we were going to stop past a, whatever the hospice furniture sale thing and see if I can find the particular thing I'm looking for. We'll see. Hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend, week, whatever day you might be watching this. I uh, hope everything is working out great for you. We are still, I'm still really impressed with this version and what it, what it capabilities are. Is it perfect by any means? No, not, not by a long shot. Like it's going 38 in a 45 still. However, it's not going 25 in a 45. So much better. I can at least, you know, enable it and attempt to get zero dis, uh, not only zero disengagements, zero interventions. This route has traditionally got zero disengagements over and over and over and over again. So it's just kind of boring. I just kind of skip it occasionally. Um, but we're gonna see how it does on the highway. If I can, I'm probably gonna have to adjust the speed. I realized afterwards, I'm gonna show you this. See, it says auto max right now. Okay, it does a blinker here, which is a good appropriate blinker. It stays in the right spot. It does a good job. And so what it's about to do is you're gonna see right here, it's gonna change from auto max to I forgot what exactly it says. I didn't actually realize this until I reviewed my video. Yeah, there you go. It just says 72 max. I don't know why it goes to 72 by default. It's interesting because it doesn't change the speed, it doesn't use auto speed on the highway. Maybe. Said it was disabled on the highway. But um like I don't want it going 70 in a 45 up here at this construction zone. And maybe that's maybe that's a tweak they're gonna do in the next version or maybe hopefully in the next couple months we'll have have this uh, updated to where it will work on the highway as well. See, I put it in chill mode earlier, if you saw that blip up on the screen, but see, we're going appropriate speed because it's not one of the past here. Of course, it has a solid line, so that's why, but also, it shouldn't be going faster than this. Yeah, see, immediately, as soon as it went to the dotted line, it decided it was going to move over. Thanks to electric power. Oh, wow, that reacted faster than I did. I had to press this, I had to press the accelerator so it wouldn't break right there. But, um, yeah, thanks to electric power, it uh, was able to speed up and pass everyone. Like, everyone's way back there now. Like, <laughs> so far back. And I'm even passing this car going up. But yeah, we're actually having to get off the highway right after, so it's probably going to change lanes soon. But yeah, that's that's the best thing about having an electric car. It's in the mountains you can just pass people so easy. You don't have, you don't even have, it's like effortless. You don't even feel it. The last time I drove a, my um, dad's old gas SUV, I, on this exact road, it just I didn't realize I was slowing down going up the hill. You had to, it just sounded it was struggling so bad to get up the hill. And it's not it was a six cylinder car. It's not like it was a slow particularly underpowered but it just still it just so felt so yeah underpowered is what it felt like compared to mine mine just I, I've gotten so used to it you don't realize it until you go you try a gas car that was like a year and a half ago or something a long time ago I haven't driven it I, that was the first time I drove a gas car in like four years so we're driving too often anymore so it, oh this is a good moment well, we're still on version 11. See what's happening is my car is not given enough space. Ver version 12 will fix this. That's a problem that version 12 I think will fix. It will know, okay, we'll let's back off a little bit and let this car in. And um, I'm sure they weren't happy that I was riding, riding right on them. Let's see when it swaps over. You got 55 max, 50 max. There, auto max right there, it swapped over. Now we're in version 12. 
So it should stay in the right of the two turn lanes. And it does, because we're about to make a right turn coming up here. And really, it should stay in this lane regardless. Because most uh, every single route I ever go this way, way well, I say that, um, one does go straight, going to Carl Sandburg, this is the route we're doing right now. But um, we're actually taking a pit stop here, and then we're going back on the road. So it's only a small detour. This is very common with this test route. We'll take that, take this little detour right here. A good blinker time. So that blinker turned on like earlier than it used to turn on. The blinkers are much improved in this version because it it turns on at appropriate times and does not turn on when it's not supposed to turn on. Like super smooth go to that turn. destination will be um, recording on the way back out and we're back everyone wait until it properly rerouts here there we go so yeah 45 on this road is correct I think that might actually be fixed because I don't remember the speed limit actually showing up before but it's going slower I don't know if it's because we're almost about to turn or what but this is to me is a really appropriate speed right here we don't need to be going 45 just because it says 45 because I know we're about to slow down for those lights. I think that was really appropriate. Let's see how it does on this right on red here. Great behavior. It is good to go, but now it's not. Could go after this car, but it probably won't. This has a wide open view for the B pillar right here. It's just being extra cautious. Like it can go, okay. I think because I had the other car and it's going, it's accelerating quite well. Like, I, I don't think it needed to accelerate quite that hard, but it was fine. It, it, it made the gap and got out and gave it the beans. So I think that um, I think that worked out well. Now we're gonna see how it does here. This traditionally, this intersection right here, has always caused some issues, and I'll explain if it ends up happening. Okay, and it looks like it's gonna end up happening. We need to be in the left of these two lanes. If you haven't seen this video, this lane ends immediately after this light. I'm about to find out what happens. I'm going to do it because I think version 12 might handle this better than previous versions. We'll see. It needs to get over because right now this lane ends. This person's actually turning into CVS. I'm not. It turns on the blinker and gets over. That's the first version to ever do that. Every other version would just zipper merge there and get in your and, and cut off people. You still cut people off, and it, to me, it's frowned upon. You shouldn't do that. Uh, but. That's uh, the car did it, and it did it appropriately this time. It actually turned the blinker on. Now, it could have turned the blinker on sooner, yes, but it still did it without my intervention. Now, this road has actually gone under construction, and it's different than what the map data shows. Why is it going so? S okay, I'm having to press accelerate it because it's it's going a little bit too slow. Right there is an appropriate speed to go over that, over that railroad. That it's just such a bad redesign in the road. It turns so much that you, it, 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 yeah, you can't go like more than that like twenty mile an hour right there and, and maintain in your lines unless you want to, you know, zip around the corner or something. This is much less hesitant, even though the map data is not correct. Right in this section, much less hesitant than version twelve was, right here. 
this this road is the same, it's just been repaved right in this section. And let's see how it slows down for this light. Yep, felt as good as ever right here. I remember this being more torn up right here. Okay, let's see how it does going over. Oh my. Okay. I didn't even see that pothole. Um, disengaged because I saw a pothole last second and then it, the car was still speeding up. Yeah, so that. I mean, a robot taxi wouldn't care. And if it's not owned by me, I wouldn't care either. It'd be like a little rough. But it would just go over the speed bumps and maybe just screw up the suspension and you'd be on your way. Not my problem. But this is my car. This I would have to fix the repairs. So that was a really big pothole. That was, that was like six inches deep or something. <laughs> so I was not going to go immediately direct hit that pothole. Yeah, so... I... That was a personal get disengagement for my car, but for a robot taxi, if I was riding in the back, I wouldn't care. If the car wants to destroy its suspension because it doesn't see the pothole, that's that's up to it. At least at slow speeds, it needs to see it at needs to see it at uh, faster speeds. And it's not that's a disengagement. Car should not be going 11 over the speed limit here. People do get pulled over. Five over is fine. There's a um, there's a fire station right there, and oftentimes there will be a police car sitting there, especially someone directing tra traffic as well. So that is not a place you want to go that fast. You will get pulled over. They explicitly lowered that speed limit for that reason. That is that I will not ever allow it to go 11 over in that spot. Five over, yes. 11 over, no. I don't know why it's still so hesitant right here. It's weird to me that it's so hesitant right there. Anyways, we made it here um, with like one real disengagement from the speed. I'm not allowing that. The other disengagement, um, up to you. I'm just gonna put it in the video as two disengagements. So technically, by all accounts, this is not the best drive it's ever done. A lot of good points, but um, based on disengagements, it's not the best drive. Um, if you guys have questions for me, put them down below and I'll see you in the next video.